In the wake of the latest tragic mass shooting, this one at the Washington, D.C. Naval Yards, post-traumatic stress disorder has become an issue. We're Skyping with Dr. Daniel Z. Lieberman, clinical director and professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at George Washington Medical Faculty Associates. We've seen so many of these shootings, from Aurora to Sandy Hook and now to the Naval Yards and so many others. Does that have an effect on us as a society? I think that seeing these things can be very upsetting. And I think that there's a great deal of sadness that goes along with seeing innocent people be killed and injured. But it's unlikely that people are actually going to develop PTSD. PTSD is a serious illness that really goes on for a very long time. And while it's normal for really anybody to have symptoms that are like PTSD in the short run, they generally go away on their own. So when you say they have sadness, the sadness lasts for a few days, lasts longer, might it trigger something, an underlying problem? Well, sadness is a very normal reaction. But what can also happen is that people can experience numbness. They can experience a heightened sense of vigilance in which they have an increased startle reaction to a loud noise or something like that. They can get sleep interference. These are all symptoms of PTSD but anybody can experience them just for a limited period of time, let's say for two or three days following exposure to the incident. So it's not unusual for people to be walking around Washington, D.C. or anywhere feeling something's changed in them or feeling some sort of uh, effect of this. It's certainly possible. A lot of it is going to depend on the nature of the trauma. Is this trauma that is somehow personally threatening to them? Did they ever experience any kind of situation in which they were involved with somebody with uh, a weapon? The other factor is how much exposure are they getting to this? Were they close to where it happened? Did they personally wonder whether they were in danger? And then how much of this media are they being exposed to? Have they somehow developed this obsessive need to constantly be watching the news or following the social media feeds? Yeah, and what part does social media play in this? I mean, it amplifies the, the message over and over again. Does it uh, have any kind of an effect? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it used to be that we would get our news once a day with the newspaper um, or with the evening news. Then we had news stations like CNN where it's 24 hours a day. Now we have things like Twitter and Facebook in which wherever we go, it's on our phone, it's on TV screens, and um, it's just so easy to tap into this. And for many people, it's almost a guilty pleasure to constantly be monitoring a tragedy as it unfolds. What about members of the media who were covering this event, or people who, uh, in the surrounding neighborhoods, or people who watch the, uh, the ambulances and the police cars and everything show up, the, the eyewitnesses, what about them? Well, I think that um, it's a lot harder for the eyewitnesses. Uh, really, um, we know the most about sort of vicarious PTSD from first responders. People who have to go in there, who have to see the bloodshed, who have to deal with the injured people in a great deal of pain. They're the ones at the highest risk. Um, media, I think much less so, and casual bystanders, uh, probably very little. While we're discussing PTSD, what are some of the symptoms? Symptoms of PTSD fall into a number of different domains. One domain is re-experiencing the trauma. That is, a person feels that thoughts of what happened to them just come into their brain outside of their control. It is a constant intrusive remembering that a patient does not want to go through. Flashbacks is also um, categorized in this area. Another part is what we call dissociation. That's where people go through life feeling as if the things around them are not real. It's almost as if that they were in a trance. And the third domain is social isolation. People who have PTSD often find it very difficult to be emotionally intimate with others. And this is in some ways a terrible irony because what they really need is support from the people around them that they love treatment, seeing a counselor, I mean, what kind of help can they get? Well, there's many different kinds of treatment. There are medications that can be helpful for PTSD. These are the SSRI antidepressants, such as Prozac and Zoloft. 
but usually they're not enough in and of themselves. Usually in addition they need psychotherapy. And one of the most common forms of psychotherapy for PTSD is exposure therapy. That is, little by little, they are re-exposed to the trauma in a safe environment. So they retrain their brain so that they know they are safe. It's not that they are constantly in a danger situation. But this can take weeks, months, years, correct? Yes, it can. Yes. Does it ever go away? For many people it does with good treatment. For many people the symptoms get more mild, but they still continue to live with some degree of suffering and impairment.